On October 16th, 2025, a Raytheon Hawker 800 XP, registration X-Ray Alpha Juliet Mike Romeo, took off from Battle Creek, Michigan on what should have been a routine post-maintenance stall test. Roughly 20 minutes later, the crew made their final transmission. It's all recovery, sir. It's all recovery. It's all recovery. Moments after that, the jet was in pieces in a wooded area near Bath Township, and all three people on board were gone. In today's video, we're going to break down what the preliminary report actually tells us, what we know about Hawker stall behavior, why this specific test flight carried unique risks, and what investigators will need to determine next. Before diving into aerodynamics and procedures, it's important to understand who was in that cockpit and why they were up there at all. These weren't inexperienced pilots or unfamiliar contract crews. According to the preliminary information, X-ray Alpha Juliet Mike Romeo was flown by its primary crew, who regularly operated this aircraft for Aerolineas del Centro in Mexico. The captain, 50-year-old Rodolfo Pimentel Zamora, and the first officer, 55-year-old Francisco del Moral Jimenez, typically flew the aircraft around 150 hours per year. They knew this airplane intimately. Their most recent recurrent simulator training took place in May 2025, about five months before the accident, meaning both pilots were current in their training cycle. Also on board was 69-year-old Alvaro Espejo, Javier Rodriguez, a maintenance representative flying along to observe how the aircraft performed after an extended maintenance period. The aircraft itself was a Raytheon Hawker 800 XP, part of the well-known BAE 125 family. It's a mid-sized business jet with a swept wing and a T-tail designed for speed and efficiency. However, like many aircraft in this configuration, its behavior at high angles of attack can be less forgiving than trainers or straight wing airplanes. That's not a criticism, just a design reality that pilots and maintenance crews must handle with respect. And that brings us to why this flight was happening in the first place. X-Ray Alpha Juliet Mike Romeo had spent seven months at Duncan Aviation's Battle Creek facility undergoing routine inspections and servicing. One of those inspections required the removal of the wing leading edges and the TKS ice protection panels. On a Hawker, that's a significant piece of work. When those panels are removed and reinstalled, the manufacturer requires a post-maintenance stall characteristics check before returning the aircraft to service. Essentially, the airplane needs to demonstrate that the stall warning and stall protection systems still behave exactly as intended. This wasn't a training flight, and it wasn't a casual proficiency hop. It was a functional test flight meant to verify critical aerodynamic systems after major work on the wing. These flights are technically simple, but operationally demanding. They sit in that uncomfortable space where everything is supposed to behave normally, yet the whole point is to confirm it actually does. To understand the risks involved, we need to understand the maintenance that triggered this test. The Hawker 800 XP uses a TKS weeping wing anti-ice system, porous titanium or stainless steel leading edge panels that release a thin glycol-based film to prevent ice buildup. When these panels are removed for inspection, especially after years of service, their reinstallation can subtly affect the exact shape of the leading edge. Even tiny variations in leading edge geometry can influence how smoothly air flows over the wing during a stall. That's why the pilot's operating manual requires pilots to perform a formal stall identification and handling check after any such work. The goal is not to stall the airplane for fun. The goal is to verify that the stall warning activates properly, the stick shaker and pusher behave as designed, and that the wing's behavior at high angle of attack is acceptable. To accomplish that safely, the manual outlines very specific conditions. Davy MC, a good visual horizon, above 10,000 feet above ground level, below flight level 180, autopilot off, external surfaces free of ice, ventral tank empty, weather radar on standby, stall identification system operative. One look at that checklist tells you something. This is not a casual maneuver. This is a precision test flown deliberately and carefully. And here's where the Hawker stands out. Many pilots are used to gentle, predictable pre-stall buffeting from trainers. The Hawker 800 XP is different. The manual openly states, there is no natural aerodynamic buffet before the stall. Stick pusher activation may occur at the stall, not before it. Pilots may experience aileron snatch, where the controls briefly move or resist input during stall onset. 
The aircraft may enter an unusual attitude at any point. Those are strong warnings. They're not the kind of language you see in every airplane manual. They signal that a Hawker stall test is something to take seriously. And the NTSB has already noted multiple prior accidents involving business jets performing required stall checks after leading edge or TKS maintenance, including a Hawker 900 XP in 2024. That doesn't mean these accidents are identical, but it does reinforce that stall checks after leading edge work represent a known risk area in the business jet world. Now let's walk through the timeline, strictly based on the preliminary report. X-Ray Alpha Juliet. Mike Romeo departed Battle Creek at 1708 local, turning northeast toward a nearby test area about nine miles from the airport. The crew requested a block altitude from flight level 140 to 160, a common request for maneuvering flights where altitude changes are expected. ADSB data shows the aircraft reached and leveled near flight level 150. That's exactly the type of altitude these tests are designed for. At this point, everything looked normal. Around 1727, the ADSB track shows a rapid descent beginning near flight level 140. The preliminary report doesn't include pitch or roll data yet, but the descent rate was fast enough to draw immediate attention. Then came the radio calls. ATC received an indiscernible transmission from X-Ray Alpha Juliet Mike Romeo. In high stress situations, that's common. The pilot may key the mic during a maneuver or lose clarity while multitasking. Cleveland Center responded, X-Ray Alpha Juliet Mike Romeo, Cleveland. The crew replied with what the NTSB translated as, that final sorry is haunting, but also human. It signals the crew recognized they were deviating from their altitude assignment and were actively attempting to regain control. After that transmission, there were no further calls. The aircraft impacted terrain in a relatively flat attitude, heading roughly 150 degrees, not nose down, not wings off, not disintegrated along a wide debris path, but rather in a compact area consistent with a high rate, partially stabilized descent. A significant post-impact fire destroyed most of the main fuselage, though investigators recovered portions of the right wing, winglets, and the impenage. Importantly, the cockpit voice recorder was recovered and sent to the NTSB lab. At this point, we can only draw three early, careful observations. The crew clearly recognized the stall and attempted a recovery. The workload was extremely high. Radio calls stopped within seconds. The impact attitude suggests the airplane may have departed controlled flight and never regained full lift before running out of altitude. Everything beyond those observations must wait for CVR slash FDR analysis. Now let's talk about something that often matters as much as aerodynamics, how the flight was planned and who flew it. Here's a detail from the preliminary report that deserves attention. Because this stall test followed major leading edge work, Duncan Aviation provided the captain with a list of professional test pilots qualified to perform it. These are pilots specifically trained to conduct functional check flights and handle unexpected aircraft behavior. The crew attempted to coordinate with a test pilot, but couldn't line up schedules. Eventually, they chose to perform the test themselves. It's important to approach this without judgment. This wasn't negligence. It was a human decision under real-world operational pressure. The airplane had already been out of service for seven months. Crews and companies feel that pressure, even unconsciously, to complete the maintenance process verify the aircraft, and get it back into service. However, maintenance test flights are fundamentally different from normal operations. They demand a structured test card, pre-planned abort criteria, and the mindset that the airplane might not behave as expected. Test pilots train specifically for the psychological shift required to fly near the aerodynamic edge with total discipline. Line pilots, even highly experienced ones, operate within the certified predictable envelope. They rely on the airplane behaving the way it's always behaved, and that's where human factors come in. Familiarity can build comfort. Comfort can reduce perceived risk. And reduced perceived risk can make a dangerous test feel routine, even when it isn't. None of this implies error by the crew. It simply highlights how operational context, scheduling pressure, and role expectations can influence decisions in high-risk test scenarios. To understand why things can go from normal to catastrophic so quickly during a stall test, we need to look at the Hawker's aerodynamics. The Hawker 800 XP's swept wing and T-tail give it strong cruise performance, but they also change how the airplane behaves 
as angle of attack increases. In many swept wing jets, the wing tips stall first. When that happens, you can lose roll stability before you even realize the wing is close to critical angle of attack. That's where the phenomenon of aileron snatch comes from. Sudden, sometimes aggressive control movements the moment airflow starts breaking down. The T-tail adds another layer. Under normal lift, the tailplane sits in relatively clean airflow, but once the wing flow starts separating, the tail may get blanketed by turbulent air, delaying elevator effectiveness. In a deep stall scenario, that can create a momentary stuck feeling where pitch authority is limited until the angle of attack is aggressively reduced. All of this demands altitude, much more altitude than pilots often intuitively expect. A fully developed stall in a swept wing business jet can take thousands of feet to recover, depending on weight, CG, and entry conditions. And stall tests are often flown at high altitude, where the margin between stall speed and operating speed becomes narrow due to reduced air density. XAJMR had a block altitude of flight level 140 to 160. For normal maneuvers, that's generous. For a hawker stall upset, it may or may not be enough, depending entirely on how quickly the recovery could be initiated and how the aircraft responded. The preliminary data shows only that the descent began rapidly from around flight level 140. Without control inputs, pitch attitude, and roll data, we can't yet know whether the aircraft entered a deep stall, a wing drop, or some other upset. What we can say is that the combination of swept wing aerodynamics and limited altitude margin makes stall recovery one of the most technically demanding scenarios in business aviation. So what needs to happen now? First, investigators will analyze whether the leading edge and TKS panels were reinstalled within spec. Even small deviations could influence stall behavior. They'll validate the operation of the stall warning, stick shaker, stick pusher, and the angle of attack sensors. Second, the CVR and FDR will clarify the exact stall entry, aircraft attitude, pilot inputs, and system behavior. This data will let investigators distinguish between a clean stall, an accelerated stall, a roll-off, or something more complex. Third, lab analysis will examine control linkages, actuators, and structural components. The preliminary report doesn't indicate mechanical failure, but at this stage, investigators cannot rule anything out. Finally, the NTSB may look at broader safety themes, whether Hawker stall tests need clearer industry procedures, whether certain operators should rely more heavily on test pilots, and whether updated guidance is needed for stall checks following leading edge or TKS work. And through all of this, one thing is certain. The crew of X-Ray Alpha Juliet, Mike Romeo, recognized the stall and were actively trying to recover. Their final call reflects that. Three aviation professionals lost their lives while performing a demanding, high-risk verification flight. They deserve a full, factual investigation, not speculation. When the final report is released, we'll revisit this case with complete data. Until then, fly safe and see you in the next video.